Today we're making Darth Vader's lightsaber from Empire Strikes Back. I made this all for about $20. And it even has vibration, clashing, and all sorts of sound effects. Interested? Here we go. This Darth Vader lightsaber journey started out with this. This is my Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker lightsaber. I'm thinking about making the one that is used in the ninth movie, but I need a little more details on this specific part. The rest I think I've got all figured out. After I made this, I thought it would just be easy to make the Darth Vader lightsaber. But that's not the case. There's so much complexity to the thing. I bought this one and you know one of the things that you typically learn pretty quickly is there's some complications here. This is a complicated piece. There's like three or four versions of this. Try to stay with the Darth Vader Empire Strikes Back lightsaber because I think that's the most iconic of all the lightsabers. More like I said the traditional. So this is my guideline. This is kind of a guideline although this is I've been working a couple years on this and I was about ready to give up when this happened. This was originally at Halloween for $7.97 and I got it at 75% off, so about three bucks. So I bought two. And the reason why is because there's some details in this, like this light thing here. I'm just gonna take it out of the package. So that's easy. Ah. This light thing is really hard to find. And the sophistication of this piece right here is kind of defeated me in many different ways. This one a little bit, but this specific piece right here has kind of done me in. I couldn't figure it out until I got one of these. So a little bit of poking and prodding and gently moving around and manipulation and you can decompose this lightsaber. So this is a piece that goes on here, and this is a piece. Let's see if I can take it off. So let's put it back together so you can see what it looked like before I destroyed it. Okay, so this piece went on here like this, and you can see kind of some glue line there. But I was hoping I could take it apart, and I was able to, and then just kind of put it all together. And that slid over this way. I'm apprehensive to put that back on because it was hard to take off. But you can imagine that this was all together. So I was able to get this piece. And this piece is pretty good. And this piece. I've got some ideas for everything else to make it look real. And I wanted to use a real pipe. This pipe is thinner than this. It's more in line with this one. But this is too chintzy. I didn't really want to use the pieces from here. And that's all fused plastic as opposed to being kind of assembled. So being able to take that piece off, I used a one and a quarter inch PVC pipe and it could be white or it could be black. The next step is to cut these all out and put them on the various pieces. Templates for the bottom and the top that I've designed for this build, I'll have a link down below where you can get those. A three, three and a half inch piece of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. Now that all your templates are taped on to your pieces, you can cut those out. You can use a hacksaw, you can see use a coping saw, or a Dremel tool. I'm probably going to use a combination of all of those. This gives you a sense. This is going to be the stopper at the end, and then you can line up the A's, and that's what the B's look like in the back. A couple hints when making this top diffuser piece. Line it up and this is a 60 degree cut and I just took a miter box, lined it up tight and did a 60 degree cut. And that will give you this perfect thing. Sand it down. After you cut it off with all the, like with all the pieces, lay this flat and then just go around like this and smooth it out. Take all the burrs off. When cutting a short piece, I came up with a little trick. I use a sacrificial paint stirrer to make sure that the piece stays locked in there in the miter saw. 
That way there's no problem. You'll see this A here. That's a pretty important thing. A down here. So I'm actually going to use a marker and make a mark there and mark there so that I can align it up correctly when I go to glue. And then I cut off this piece of pipe. Nine and a half inches long and I'll show you how I made that. It's going to be very similar to this on how I put it together because this was very successful and it's comfortable in the hand and feels a lot and looks a lot more realistic than anything you can buy. And then this piece I was going to originally make but then I found out that I can take this piece off and I'm going to cut this down and then I'm going to make the band. And I'll show you that also. But the, one of the key pieces was this. I didn't like how big this was, so I came up with a one and a half inch conduit connector. I cut it off and came up with something like this, and that's a sleeve that helps make up the difference here. And a little bit of shaping and drawing, see that fits in there really well. That allows me to put this piece in, and then I'm lining it up here as best as I can and leaving a little bit of a gap there so that it will fit in here. I want a lightsaber blade. This is one inch shark bite and this is a one inch shark bite connector. This is a one inch shark bite connector. You can see that there's a little rim in there. Using a Dremel tool in a little file I was able to take the gap so that I can pass the one inch pipe I'm going to use a much longer one, obviously, for the blade, and use that in the sleeve. So this all is part of the build, and that fits in there real nice and tight. So that's going to come down in here. I'm actually making the grooves in it right now to recreate this grooved pattern. We'll feed in to there with an additional sleeve of, this is one and a half inch schedule 20. And you can see that slides on there really well. So I'm gonna glue that on. And so this sleeve here will make up this gap in here. And I'll cut that out and it will all be together. And then I'm gonna paint it. You can see that there's a hole here and no hole here. If you look at the sketch, there's actually holes in there. So you could actually get away with just leaving the holes in there. But I think I'm going to cap it off. So what I'm going to do is take the original. You can see where I cut the first one off. I'm going to cut this little tab off here and slide it in there. So I'm going to glue this all up and then spray paint it. Here you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of cutting in here and just cutting as flush as I can to the center tube to get this little piece off right there. Now that I have this little piece here, all I do is just push it in place. It snaps in. I know there's a little bit of a gap there, but I'm not too worried about that. Now I have the other side an outline. I'm going to cut that out so that I can put it in here on the other end. Using a standard coping saw, I'm going to cut this little piece here out this little piece here and this piece here. So let me do that off camera. I'll come right back. I tried to give myself a little bit of a margin around the piece. That way I could file or sand it down and I wouldn't be cutting in. So you can see I kind of in just a little bit here on the end there when I first started. So I'm going to give myself a margin. It's easier to sand that down than it is to just kind of cut in and mess up the piece. Cut the first bit off. If depending on how you wanted to play this out, you could actually just cut it off on both sides and actually use the entire piece. But I'm going to try to make that out of metal so it looks a little more realistic than this plastic. But this plastic piece is fairly complex and I want to be able to utilize this piece here on the top and it's already set up for that. So here's the piece off. There's an actual cut line to take that off right there. Again, you could use this whole piece here if you desired. Let me show you what it looks like there. You could use that maybe. Eh, it might work. You got a little bit of a gap. You might have to make up with some more one and a quarter inch schedule 20. All right, sand it down and file down this piece. 
I'm going to do a little quick fit check here just to see how the progress is going and whether or not that's at the right level. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's such a complicated piece to get to pull off. I am going to probably put some real screws in here. I had a golf tee that I was going to use for this, but I think we're just going to go with straight with that one. We'll see how that works out. <clears throat> and then for this piece here, all I did was I took the Schedule 20 plumbing and I just put it right in there like that, lined it up, traced it out with a mechanical pencil that was really thin, and got that line to work from. So now we'll cut that out. Now there's a little hint. When I put this in the vise, I'm using the coupler piece that I had left over from this front part, and I'm using that and mounting it in the vise to help me control how I'm cutting this so I don't have to hold it in my hand, obviously. And that's working out pretty good. Here's the initial rough cut of the sleeve. Not too bad. It looks like I need a little work here and here. See how that slides on. Once I glue it all up, it'll be a lot better. And that's going in there. And, you know, I initially had some curve in here, but then I realized, heck, it's, that's just going to be all masked by that anyway. So This is a real critical piece here. I've had to make sure that everything's in alignment. If this is crooked for some reason, it's just going to look funny. So this measurement here to this line to here is 45 millimeters. And when I line it up, it's pretty close to 45 millimeters. I've got a lip on the inside here all the way around. And I've just gone around here like this with this part of the calipers. You could use any kind of marker. This just happened to work for me. Make sure that's all in alignment so that when I put this piece on here and glue that in, that's going to be in alignment. And then I've taken a mechanical pencil, thin mechanical pencil, and just drawn all over this piece so that when I put in the glue, I'll have 30 seconds to kind of get it right in place where I want it to be. And then once I glue that up, then I'll do this piece here. So I'm going to do one more fit check because this is so important. Yeah, that's on there pretty flush. I think I've got it right. This is just like friction tape or cloth tape, hockey tape, whatever you want to use here to make up a subtle difference between this and this, putting it together. Taking a rapid fuse and spread it around. So let's see how we do this. Come on. It's a tight fit and I don't have much time. I want to get it as close as possible before I start pushing it on. There we go. Okay. Now I've got to get it in place. Come on. Well, that was exciting. I actually had to go a little medieval on this because it had frozen up a little too quickly and it was rapidly fusing. So I had to knock it off and start over again. So you can see that crack chip here that I'm going to glue in place. See, it fits right in there and you'll never know because that will be all painted up. And then when I put this on, I'm not going to use so much rapid fuse. And then I'm strategically thinking about how I'm going to glue this up so I don't have the same problem I had before. So I think I'm going to have glue here, glue here, glue here. Some glue in here, but not too much. Now let's put it on. Try to get it aligned as quickly as possible, but also from the very beginning. Hold it in place for 30 seconds, and that guy should be right where I want it. Sometimes with dissimilar plastics, rapid fuse doesn't work so well, and this is one of those times. I just can't get it to glue up. Where I was rushed before, this guy's not going. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get some super glue run it around this edge here, and then try to mate up with the rim, and then up here on top. So let's get some super glue. 
Here we go with super glue. Now I'm a little nervous about super glue because boy, when you get that sucker in place, it's gonna take. So you really don't have much time at all with super glue. Here we go. See what we got here. Is that gonna make it? Hmm. Almost instantaneous bond. If it's working. Hmm. Looks like it might be. Got some extra here. I'm probably going to sand off a little bit. So a combination of glues I had to use for this one. Just a standard super glue. And then rapid fuse kind of let me down on this one. This one piece. And it's happened before with different plastics. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I'm happy with the sleeve. And it's important because that's the piece that kind of will glue into plumbing piece here. All right, just hold it in place for about 30 seconds and that piece is done. Put the grooves in there. I'll probably be the only one that knows, but sometimes it's kind of nice. I figured out how far I want to put this in here. Mark the inside with a pencil. Now I'm going to tape it with painting tape on the inside to keep it from getting painted when I do this all up. That's kind of what and then I'm gonna tape the inside here because that's got a that's a pretty tight fit. And I don't want to lose that by putting a couple coats of paint on. So tape here, tape here. It's all taped in there. It's a bit of a hodgepodge, but you just want to make sure you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and anguish if you just tape that in fairly well. And there's the line on the inside. Hopefully you can see it right there. Certainly can see it there. I could take a razor and kind of clean it up if for some reason it's a little too much, but that's not, I'm trying to save myself some time. And like frosting, paint can cover up a lot of little flaws. So we'll see how that works. And I'm gonna use this hammered finish paint See, it says hides flaws. Look at there. Amber imperfections. <laughs> exactly what I wanted. Because I kind of like this look. It's kind of like it's been around heat. Or it's designed to be around heat. So I want to really kind of change that up from this plasticky black to something that looks like, you know, it was there. But I might sand this down a little bit to help the paint grip to that shiny plastic. Taking a paint stick and whittled it down a little bit so that will give me something to hold on to when I spray. And you can see I've dulled up the shiny plastic a little bit. Hopefully to make this adhere a little more. If you want a really quick paint stand, all you need is a clamp. Wrap it in the bag unless you want it painted. And then you slide in a paint stick. And this is exactly the setup I had, except for the bag's all painted up, to make the top part. It's been 48 hours. It's completely dry. Like I'm starting to take some of the paint, or some of the tape I put down here, and allow. Yep, not bad. Might have to do some cleanup there. For a nice flush fit with the pipe. As I'm going through the video footage, I realize that I'm probably going to have to do a couple segments on this build because it's kind of complicated and there's a long story behind it. So stay tuned for the other segments. They're coming soon. I'm trying to get them out in the next week. If you wait a week or so, you'll probably have them all. Thumbs up and comments. Always appreciate it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned because the other parts of the videos all the way to the lightsaber, lit and ready to go, will be on their way shortly.